Hello. In this first of four talks on the issue of radiation burns in interventional radiology, I'm going to talk about a number called the interventional reference point air kerma, uh, what it is and uh, what it means. So if we take a source of radiation, here I'm showing you the sun, at a certain point here we can have an intensity, a strength. And when it comes to ionizing radiation in interventional radiology, the intensity is measured in terms of a milligray, or because the amount of radiation we use is quite a lot, in terms of gray. And so the air kerma is the X-ray beam intensity. If you want to think of it in a simplistic way, and I would certainly encourage that, uh, you can think of it of the number of photons per square millimeter. That means it's a concentration unit. It doesn't tell you the total number of x-rays that are incident on the patient. If you want to know that, you must take the air kerma and multiply it by the corresponding beam area. And it is something that is known as the kerma area product. This is related not to radiation burns, but to the patient cancer risk. And I will have another series of talks and, uh, that will explain the Kerma area product in interventional radiology. Now, the second bit, so now we know what air Kerma is, uh, is the interventional reference point. In IR, we rotate an imaging chain around an imaginary point called the isocenter. Um, we take a point 15 centimeters closer to the focal point, and that is the interventional reference point. And any numbers that you see pertain to this point. Now, one thing I would point out is an average patient is maybe 24 centimeters thick, that the uh, isocenter is probably in the center of the patient. And so the patient's skin is at this location here, three centimeters further away than the IRP point. So um, it's close to where we believe the patient's skin uh, or the entrance is, but it is not the same number. And that is something that you should bear in mind. Um, in terms of the IRPK air, this is the number we're getting. You can think of it as the radiation that is incident on the patient. And if you have this number, you can use it to derive the peak skin dose. And the peak skin dose itself is used to estimate the chance of a risk of a radiation burn. And as you'll see later on, the IRPK air is the number that you see on the monitor. It is close and related to the peak skin dose, but if you want to get the peak skin dose, you have to talk to a medical physicist who will take a number of additional technical factors into account in determining this number. So what are typical values? Well, I would say if you take a digital photo spot image with your IR uh, imaging system, you take one image, uh, the IRPK air will be close to a milligray. Um, if you uh, put your foot on the pedal and do fluoroscopy, the uh, IRP air kerma rate will be something like 10 milligray per minute. And I'm assuming a normal mode of operation and an average size patient. And therefore, one thing that you can usually assume is that if you take 10 photo spot images as shown here, it is the equivalent of one minute of fluoroscopic imaging. It gives you an ability to intercompare the digital images with the fluoroscopy. And as an aside, in most uh, uh, IR procedure, I would expect most of the radiation delivered to the patient to be from photo spot imaging and a minority of the radiation exposure uh, due to a fluoroscopy, which is another way of saying that fluoro time is actually not terribly helpful. And so the uh, bit that I would point out is the number that you see on the monitor as shown here or printed out in a report from the digital images 
This number here is the IRP uh, Kerma from the photo spot images in run number six. This is how it was done. This is the uh, entrance uh, Kerma. At the end of your exam, you will have another number here, 150 milligray. This is from the fluoroscopy. So we have DSA images, one run gave you this amount of radiation. The fluoro, 25 minutes, gave you this amount of radiation. And when you add all the 11 runs, not just the one I'm showing you here, and all the fluoroscopy, this is the entrance air coma for the whole examination. Now, this is important. This is what you can get at the end of a report. So let me just go through it again. Here is the air coma at the IRP location for this particular run. Each run has its own values. Here's the total for the fluoroscopy. And here is the total from the photospot imaging and from the fluoroscopic examination as depicted here. And so if you're interested to see what typical IRP air coma values actually are at US uh, uh, academic medical centers, there's an excellent study by Don Miller and his colleagues that was published over a decade ago, but an outstanding study. And the cumulative, the total IRP air coma, you can see here for a given examinations, 25% are between three and four gray. So these are relatively high doses. And notice that you can get numbers that can become really quite high. In terms of predicting a radiation burn, you need the peak skin dose. And unfortunately, to do this properly, you need the expertise of a medical physicist who will look into issues such as the overlap of multiple beams, the attenuation of the table that the patient lies on, and the exact location of the uh, interventional reference points relative to the uh, uh, patient uh, skin as indicated here. So it can be done, it's rather involved, and uh, if you want to get a peak skin dose estimate, then that is what you would have to do. If you have any questions on this IRP air coma rate, I am most easily reached at uh, my Hotmail account, walterhuda at hotmail.com.